uh, it it was it was great. It, it was the band that I'm playing with is uh, is extra good. They they learned my music so well. And um, but tonight tonight was kind of had the magical moments where the songs went beyond the songs. You know, it was um, they got to almost a spiritual place when I played the song I wrote for my mother. Uh, and, it just everybody in the band is very sensitive to moods, and and we got to some very special places musically tonight. It was very good, and the audience, the audiences in Japan are always great. The audiences here are always wonderful. So, no, it was a good night. It was a good night. I thought this year has been a little bit more um, focused and a little bit better than last year for some reason. I don't know why, but it's good. I hope it keeps going in that direction. Culturally, well, that, that's a big. That's a big story. Culturally, I think in the past, you know, it's what you grow up with. Things you grow up with are things that define the kind of player you are when you get older. And um, I think most American musicians were maybe brought up with more uh, of the uh, African American influence, more of the rhythm and blues. And so I think, generally speaking, uh, Americans, the time groove was a little bit more uh, a more solid and more tight and funkier but that's changing you know as time goes on the Japanese uh, public and the Japanese culture is also being uh, exposed to uh, the funkier more swinging uh, feel so I think I mean I'm, I'm 51 years old now so uh, and I've been coming to Japan for 20 years, and I think I think overall the sensibilities and the diversity and uh, is definitely much more advanced now than it was 20 years ago. So now it's it's not surprising to find great players who can just groove forever and who can play great and harmonically. They can swing, and uh, so there's less difference now than there used to be. Um, I, I mean, for me personally, and this is true with a lot of American musicians too, I mean, I'm, I've gone back to more of my roots, playing simple, more bluesy, and trying to play more melodic. I care less about a lot of notes and shredding. So when I hear somebody really shredding on guitar or shredding on any instrument, I'm not as impressed as somebody who can play more mature and more uh, from a melodic standpoint. So that... Um, I hear more of that in Japanese musicians now. Uh, and the difference is, uh, well, here's another difference. In Los Angeles, if I want to play with my band uh, and I want to rehearse for a gig, I, it's difficult to find people who want to really learn the music really well, unless you pay them money, because everybody's trying to make a living. Here, the guys in the band were so respectful and they, and they were so nice, they learned my music incredibly great. I didn't have to tell anybody the voicing or the time or or uh, the rehearsal went by like that and uh, so they're much more attentive to detail it seems like when I come over here so for me and in America also the the jazz scene is very strange there's a uh, smooth jazz which is so prevalent in the American music scene now it's, and it's less about notes and less about it's more about production and it's really simple it's almost like McDonald's McDonaldo McDonaldo of music smooth jazz is now in the United States um, my music playing with a distortion I think distortion guitar can be very sensitive it can be very light and very expressive in America they often think that's too much fusion or too much rock so most jazz guitar players most smooth jazz guitar players only have a classical like a Earl Clue sound or a George Benson clean sound anything else will not get on the radio it will not get any airplay and many people because of that many people don't hear it uh, it's too bad uh, commercialism and capitalism is bad that way it's uh, marketing for the masses so people can make money and in Japan there still seems to be uh, an audience for uh, more expressive, more artistic uh, expression, if that makes any sense. Does that make any sense? I don't know. Well, uh, no, I mean, so far, we've only played two gigs so far, so uh, 
nothing that funny has happened so far. It's just been a joy. It's been a pleasure just to play. Uh, interesting episodes? Mm. No, I enjoy playing with Kiyomi. She's so cute and she's so funny. And, uh, but uh, nothing yet. I mean, maybe the joke about uh, battling guitar players was one, you know. They said it was the guitar battle, but I don't see it as a battle as much as just, a, you know, playful bantering, you know, on stage. But no, nothing, everything's so far is so good, and there's not been any funny episodes. It's just, it's just a pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. That's all I know so far. Plus, I'm so jet lagged. I'm still so tired all the time that it's hard to, to tell. But uh, ask me again in a week. I'll have a better answer for you. <laughs> Every time I come to Japan, I'm just always impressed. This band in particular is very sensitive. You know, everybody listens so good. Um, the bass player is very tasteful. The drummer is keeps good time, and he's always watching. Uh, there's no egos. There's no self-centered individual egos. They're not, look at me, look at me. It's not about that. They're all playing for an ensemble um, uh, direction. They're all, they're all into the way the band sounds, and that's, that's great. Especially Kiyomi, she's really, she, got, she gets it. She gets the, um, the vibe of each of my songs. So in Waltz for Tina, I mean, it's difficult in Los Angeles to find guys who can recreate my music um, with all the sounds and the textures and the heart and the feeling. And these guys have really taken pride and, and um, gone the extra yard to really, um, to really make the music come alive. So individually, they're all great. But the main thing, like they're mature. They're all listening to each other and they're listening to the melodies and they're not overplaying and they're all working together as a unit. And that's always rare. That's always a good thing. And they're also they're all great people. There's no egos. That's that's the thing I like. Because that's it's the first thing to destroy a band unit. And they're all they're all um, cognizant and aware of the music. It's not about solo. It's not about individual. They're all about the the music, and that's that's great. It's it's a re very refreshing. Oh, Koichi, oh, he's great. You know, it wakes me up to hear another guitar player that good who has all those chops. And um, He's, he's uh, playing more from a more academic and more, um, maybe more complex and a deeper place harmonically than I sometimes go. But uh, no, he's great. He's totally got it. He's totally with it. You know, he understands. You know, we're a little bit different in that I'll, I'll play back and play three notes where he'll play 300 notes. But it's okay. He still expresses himself uh, really well that way. And uh, he's got a lot of fire and he, he, you know, he's got a lot of heart in his playing. So he's, it's a pleasure to play with him for sure. I love it. I love, I love playing back and forth with somebody like that. It's like having a conversation with two people, you know. He, he does something crazy and I do something crazy. He does something high, I do something low, you know, and he's really, we worked even rhythm playing, even rhythm playing, when I'm playing the low part, he'll be playing something up high, and we don't get in each other's way, so it's a good combination, I think, I hope to work with him a lot, I'm sure we'll stay in touch in the future, quite a bit, I hope so.